Good evening, everyone. This is Mohammad Anis, uh, Product Manager at DC Cap, and I'll be facilitating the panel discussion on how to optimize e-commerce from the distributor's perspective. Yeah, as uh, uh, Carrington introduced, yeah, we have Jenny Sagan and Daniel Joseph with us. Uh, we are glad we are having you tonight. And yeah, before we begin, right, let's start like uh, with your business. Can you introduce about like, uh, can you talk more about your business and what do you do? Sure. I am Jenny Sagan. I am from Cleveland, Ohio, and I am an office manager for three companies all wrapped up into one building. And we all use the Profit 21 platform. And two of our companies went with the e-commerce integrator with DC Cap for best specialized and hydraulic components. Yeah, yeah thanks. Uh, thanks, Jenny, and we're proud we are you ha you have having you as a customer. Thank and uh, over to you, Daniel. So I'm Dan Josephs. We are a janitorial distributor in New Jersey. So we sell cleaning supplies, um, and we've been. I used to say everybody we're a small business, but I, I think the federal government no longer allows that anymore. I think we're a medium now, but. <laughs> Um, so hopefully no one's here, but, uh, and we've been a family business for the last, uh, since 1961. So our company has been around a long time and, uh, we've been with DC cap, I don't even believe uh, yeah. about long four time. years yeah. now. So, um, we've had a lot of experience with you guys. Thanks, uh, Daniel. Uh, yeah, we have learned a lot from you, Daniel. So yeah, before let's begin with Jenny now. So Jenny, what do you see as the biggest challenges when it comes to digital transformation or e-commerce uh, for the distributors? So I see that there's two big challenges. One, internal, right? So you have one internal and one external. Your internal challenges are your data. A lot of it's dirty data and you don't know how dirty that is until you're putting that out there for the rest of the world to see, right? Like <laughs> how, thank you. Because we all see that as an everyday, it's, it's just something that's there. The external is your customers. You want that to be, we know our own language, but you don't know what your customers are calling it. We may call it something and your customers are gonna, gonna call it something completely different. So you need that all around language to capture it all so that you are reaching all of your customers. They may call it one thing, you may call it the other, but it's all one thing that you are capturing. That's a challenge in itself. That's wonderful. That's a great explanation, Jenny. Thank you. So, Daniel, now let me go back to you. Yeah, being in the e-commerce industry for over many years, so what do you consider as the main advantage of uh, being an e-commerce distributor as well when compared to the traditional distribution channels? So I, I think we, we all know a lot of the advantages of e-commerce, and it's it's accuracy, it's it's speed, it's putting you know, the onus on the customer of ours to, to enter their information and to submit the data. But I think what goes unsaid, especially with what's going on in the labor market today, is, is what that allows a distributor to free up in their customer service time. And then what we could then do with it. So for, for our standpoint, the more customers that we get on board that are self-submitting their own orders, the accuracy is there, the speed is there, but then we could then turn on our customer service staff to look at aging, where, where we are with that customer. Have they not ordered certain things in a while? Educate the sales team on what they're doing differently. Be able to, to, to do the job of customer service rather than just order entry, which is what that role has been for so many years through distribution. Wonderful, uh, Daniel. That was really helpful. Yeah, Jenny, like, how has the adoption of the new e-commerce platform impacted your uh, business strategy and implementation? So our business strategy has changed shifted just slightly. Um, we are looking at getting an overall diverse audience now that we are global. You, you know, I mean, like every single person out there now has access to us that didn't have access to us before. Accidental clicks, you know, 
the whole nine yards. So we have shifted into that mindset of capturing it all. And our strategies have changed just slightly in capturing that and the diverse audience that we're capturing. Okay, wonderful. That was a great insight, uh, Jenny. And Daniel, like, what are the essential building blocks that distributors should focus on for successful implementation and excel in the e-commerce? Uh, so that's a great question. I think um, over the years, we, we all see Amazon, we see Granger, we see all the other distributors in our marketplace that have the key elements of what we need. And it's self-service. So it's being able to place your own orders as a customer, being able to see your order status, being able to see um, you know invoices, what's paid, what's, that's your baseline. That If you want to get into the game, that's where you need to be. I think the next level of features that was key for us, and I think key for distribution, is the idea of being able to schedule orders, the being able to do duplicate orders or repeat orders. And then for us, it's you know the entire concept of, of this shopping list. So you know, I can only imagine you know, large companies having thousands, tens of thousands of different SKUs on their website. It's daunting for a customer to be able to browse those. They don't remember the name, they don't remember the SKU number. If you provide them with these approved shopping lists or you know, have them be able to create it themselves, it narrows that field down for them to be able to place those orders quickly, more efficiently, less errors, they're, they're placing the right items. Um, and that, that's been huge for us. And that changes our dynamic from where a lot of other e-commerce businesses are going. Wonderful, Daniel. Thanks for emphasizing that key building blocks. Uh, yeah, a couple of uh, questions to both of you. So, Jenny, like, what future trends do you foresee in the world of distribution-centric e-commerce? And how should businesses prepare for these changes? So, I fully believe that the trend going forward is AI. Like, it's all knocking on our doors, if not beating down our doors, right? So, we all need to embrace that. But into what level we are wanting to embrace that? We need to educate our employees as to how far we want that to go, what it it impacts and what we want that to interact with in, internally and externally. So that's the biggest challenge I see for us as the future trends of e-commerce is that AI. Wonderful, Jenny. And over to you, Daniel. What do you think? Has so we did not coordinate this, but I, I feel the same way about AI. Um, I could give you some specifics. Uh, some of us might be using AI to manage our own internal um, inventory levels and purchasing forecasts. But I think the next level for AI for us might be to be able to open that up for our customers so that they can better manage their inventory. They can better manage their forecasting and structure. And then if any of you guys have played around with ChatGPT, being able to create custom dynamic content I think is a new way forward for what we're capable of doing. Um, I, we played around with it in our sales team, and it's scary how accurate and how you know impressive it could be. I think we shouldn't be scared of it. I think we should embrace it and, and find a way to use it for what we need it for. And I think dynamically generating web pages, dynamically generating landing pages, and all these things that we could be creative about would be very impressive. Wonderful, uh, Daniel. Uh, so, Jenny, like, how's your experience working with DC Cap? It's been wonderful. I, I fully appreciate all of the work and effort that DC Cap has put into helping us grow as a business and e-commerce site, uh, teaching us all about what we need to know and growing our business within and externally. Um, any problem that has arose we've been able to communicate and solve within a very timely manner. And that is the most important thing of all. I really appreciate that part of it. That's great to know, Jenny. It's really, we are proud of you. And what would you, Daniel? Uh, so my kids appreciate all the stuffed rhinos, I'll tell you that. I <laughs> all over the house. Of course, um, of course. everyone but, loves that. Uh, I, I have two things, I guess. It's um, one, you guys have created a, a culture of yes which you don't find a lot in software companies. The idea that you know, we could come up with a question and, or an issue and your first response is yes, I, I, we, we could do it, let's do some research and, and we could get there. 
I, I can't emphasize how important that is and how valuable that is. That allows a distributor to be creative, to think outside the box, knowing that they have a partner that, that could look past those things and say, yeah, we could do that. We'll figure out how to do that. And then I, I think the other thing is, and having worked for so many years with you guys, is the ideas of a, a domestic company and an offshore company there's benefits to an offshore company, special for development. And I don't think we talk about it a lot. And one of the big things for us is that cycle, that development cycle gets exponentially faster because you guys are working when we're sleeping. You guys finish development, we wake up, we could test. We do a full day of testing, we give you guys the issue, you go back to work when we go back to sleeping. It's a 24 hour cycle. If you work with a domestic company, it's 12 hours, it's your work day, that's it, that's all you got, and when they're off, you're off, and everybody's 12 hours, everyone's sleeping, there's no more work to be done. So I think that goes a long way. Well said. <laughs> yeah, wonderful. Yeah, as we conclude our uh, discussion on B2B commerce, yeah, as uh, everyone also talked, like about readers are leaders in DC Cap. I just want to know, what book are you currently reading, Jenny? So I am reading Mike Rose, that's what, how I heard it. And I really enjoy it. It's great, wonderful little short stories of little things. And he gives a great little insight and keeps you hanging on until the very, very end. And he lets you know exactly what that story is about. And it's been wonderful. Oh, nice. Good to know. And what about you, Daniel? Uh, so two books. I have an 11-year-old, and I'm reading with him The Storm Don't Runner. Don't say Harry no, Potter. No, I wish it was Harry Potter. <laughs> <laughs> the, the Storm Runner, which is intense for an 11-year-old. But So we're reading that. And then the business book I'm reading is a, is a book by Bob, Bob Modesto. It's uh, Demand Side Selling. Uh, or demand side sales. Uh, it's a phenomenal book. It's a, he, he actually has a couple new books out. Um, it's all about jobs to be done. Um, for anybody in distribution that has a sales team, I would encourage you to have the whole sales team read it and talk about it. Wonderful, Daniel. Yeah, thanks, uh, Jenny and Daniel, uh, for giving us a unique perspective on the B2B commerce. Great, that, great uh, and thanks again. Thank you. And good evening, guys. Have a great evening. Thank you once again. <laughs>